so welcome everyone so we are on week 17 prayers and meditations by the mother and we have uh, two prayers with us march 1 and march 3 1914 so we'll see if we are able to cover both we'll try to cover both so anyone who would like to read the first prayer for us please and March 1, 1914. Okay, I can read it. It is in one's own self that all the obstacles lie. It is in one's own self that all the difficulties are found. It is in one's own self that there is all the darkness and ignorance. Were we to travel throughout the earth, were we to go and bury ourselves in some solitude, break with all our habits, lead the most ascetic life yet if some bond of illusion held back our consciousness far from thy absolute consciousness if some egoistic attachment cut us off from the integral communion with thy divine love we would be no nearer thee despite all our outer circumstances can any circumstances be considered more or less favorable? I doubt. It is the idea we have about them which enables us to profit much or little by the lessons they give us. O oh Lord, I implore Thee, grant that I may be perfectly conscious and master of all that constitutes this personality so that I may be delivered from myself and thou alone mayst live and act through these multiple elements. To live in love, by love, for love, indissolubly united to thy highest manifestation. Always more light, more beauty, more truth. So I would invite if anyone has gone over the prayers and any, even now uh, going through it. If you are yeah, Monica, you can you please read this first paragraph again? Yes. Where okay. we to travel throughout the earth. Okay. okay. Yeah. It is in one's own self that all the obstacles lie. It is in one's own self that all the difficulties are found. It is in one's own self that all is, there is all the darkness and ignorance. Were we to travel throughout the earth, were we to go and bury ourselves in some solitude, break with all our habits, lead the most ascetic life, yet if some bond of illusion held back our consciousness far from thy absolute consciousness, if some egoistic attachment cut us off from the integral communion with thy divine love, we would be no nearer thee despite all outer circumstances. Can any circumstances be considered more or less favorable? I doubt it. It is the idea we have about them which enables us to profit much or little by the lessons they give us. So, yeah. Please uh, share Thank your you. Thank you, Monica. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that resonates, anything that's coming out more, please unmute and Yeah, um, 
you know this uh, how it's a journey so i think once you start seeing that how you know you first start with blaming others we have all seen that that people situations circumstances relationship culture country you know because of all that or that person or this thing i was not able to do what i had wanted to do but more and more more and more as we see we see that it's you know even if i am not choosing i am choosing not to choose so we see that we are our own obstacles like i think you had said once monica that you know we i realize that i am the wall around me so i think that's like seems like the first step that at least we are not outside now blaming others and stuff at least we know that i am here and i'm living this life and it's my choosing so the at least the blaming you know the victim or the guilt maybe that can that would set the side and you know the darkness the ignorance the extent of it you know i mean it's just don't even know what to say about it so here mother is saying that if we were to travel throughout the earth were we to go and bury ourselves in some solitude so it's like again you know how you know that's reminding me like the topic of the first harmony circle was that i i am more than my circumstances and that had you know come to me in a way in a way i don't know what way but like so it's just it just i keep seeing that again and again because we keep limiting ourselves thinking that this is it you know i have i don't know i am this and this is enough maybe this is enough maybe but again no matter what we seek if this was to change or if this were to change or if i was in the himalayas and not in a big city and stuff 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 then things would be different but here you know how she is saying that if we were to travel through the earth like anywhere where we to go and bury ourselves in some solitude break with all our habits lead the most aesthetic life yet if some bond of illusion held back our consciousness far from thy absolute consciousness consciousness so egoistic attachment cut us off from the integral communion with thy divine love we would be no nearer the despite all outer circumstances you know this when i read it like just before the session it felt both you know kind of sad because you realize how far you are i mean at least in your mind you know because you see how tied up you are so attached to so many things and of course you know at least the other thing is that there is a way out i mean there would be i mean this is also a state that is achievable so it was it went both ways but it's good to have this reaffirmation that i can keep blaming if i want to but that's just you know me being childish or ignorant and no circumstances are more or less favorable i mean it's like it's you know all about my will my sincerity my offering my surrender i don't know my sincerity i know i'm repeating that word again so she says i doubt it it is the idea we have about them which enables us to profit much or less by the lessons they give us so this we see so often right like if something happens to us we kind of first get into the you know drama of the thing this happened that happened this this is how the other person reacted this is how i reacted and we forget to see we you know we are unable to see what the situation or the person is trying to teach us is trying to get us out of but so if we can just so this is a, again you know not something that we need to be reminded again and again and again that you know that kabir doha i don't know uh, the exact words that how you know you 
uh, Kabir's, uh, Kab you know, he would pick up the main stuff and leave the stuff that's not needed, that Tota, Tota, Devdai. I don't know how that starts. It's not coming to me. So it also becomes like a practice, you know, when I'm kind of, if I see myself wanting to blame or crib a bit. So again, it's like I've lost my focus and one can again, you know, I don't know, point their compass where one wants to. And it's, you know, while reading this, it also feels a bit, again, I don't know, a bit low that, you know, how many times I've heard this and how clear this is and how there's no doubt. And yet I see so many places where, you know, I can do better. So, you know, uh, I think I remember reading once there was this person who used to go to a guru and he would say that, you know, kal bhi apne ye bola tha ya, do hafte pehle bhi you had repeated the same thing, you keep repeating the same thing. And the guru, you know, asked him that I repeated it, but did you listen? Like, did you listen the first time, the second time, the third time? So because you don't listen, I have to repeat. So I think that's what I felt here too, that now listen, now listen. So Lord, I implore thee, grant that I may be perfectly conscious and master of all that constitutes this person, personality, so that I may be delivered from myself and thou alone may live and act through these multiple elements. So one thing is for certain that if I leave it to myself or if I pick it up myself, I don't see how I can move ahead or how I can move beyond. Unless, you know, again, when I, if I'm, unless I'm surrendered, unless she takes it up, he takes it up. It's being, I, yeah, so... To live in love, by love, for love, indissolubly united to thy highest manifestation. Always more light, more beauty, more truth. So perfection is not a point, it's a process. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. So anyone would like to share anything that bounces more than other lines or anything that touched you deeply? Anything that you resonate with? Okay, so I'm assuming there is no further reflection at this moment. So I'll Go over it once more and then in the meantime, if you have any insight, any, anything comes up, please do unmute and share. And as you were sharing that uh, all of it appears, when we read it, it appears like true, 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 you know. <laughs> but when we look at our fact check, our reality, we see that, as you said, we are far away uh, from our highest possibility and yet it is a process and having said that it is a process, we also know that we have a very limited time. Kabir ji, uh, to a sadhak on the path, he would say, uh, dheere dheere re mana. You know, to a, a true sadhak, a sincere one, who maybe time to time may get frustrated, he would say, dheere dheere re mana, dheere sab kuch hoi. So don't be too you know, frustrated or annoyed at your progress. Be, be okay, baby steps. But to person who is sleeping yet, who is not yet on the path, who is not putting effort to become more conscious uh, of what we are doing every day, uh, to him it would say urgent, urgent, get up right now. Because it kills our life. If we don't get up right now, we have the global situation right in front of us, you know, kind of, we are confronted on our face with this global situation, wars, you know, uh, people occupying countries and 
forcing their regime on other countries. So this is why the urgency is there. And if we go to individual homes, not even to a global level, we know how, how depressive the situation is. No matter how beautiful our houses may look from outside, we may have gotten into a new house, you know, new place, doesn't matter. But we are really, really uh, depressed. And we will remain so if we remain disconnected from our true self. And that is why Kabirji would say, Jago, you know, wake up to your true self. Because that's the only thing that's, that can bring us a deeper contentment, deeper fulfillment and make this life meaningful. Otherwise, meaningless life, you know, we can live. There is no hardly any effort needed in a meaningless life. But we also know that a meaningless life is also very frustrating. And in order to escape the frustration, we can involve ourselves in all kinds of addictions and yet remain very unfulfilled, deeply unfulfilled within. And that's why the urgency. And when each one of us takes this sankalpa to stay on the path, no matter how difficult it is, uh, you know, we, we, that's the true social service that we can do. That no matter what, whenever the ripple of ego consciousness will arise, I'm not going to listen to it. I'm going to put my foot down. I have listened to the ego consciousness enough. Anything that suffocates, anything that limits us, anything that brings out a ripple of ugliness, you know, darkness, if you are able to differentiate, that's what is ego consciousness how to check it out anything that brings excessively the focus on me me you know my need my desire and why did didn't this happen according to what i wanted so my family my relatives so all this is the expanse of ego consciousness and if we have suffered enough many of us may have not but if we have suffered enough, then somehow a conviction arises that bohat ho gaya, you know, enough. Now I really want a different life. And then one can begin to say no to the egoistic consciousness. So I just went in a different tangent, although related uh, with the egoistic self. I'll just read it again and let's see what comes up. It's in one's own self that all the obstacles lie. So world is a mirror. We can actually hold this a mantra. So if I am seeing ugliness or evil in somebody else, if I am seeing frustration or annoyance in somebody else, I just have to look within. If I am seeing selfishness and arrogance in somebody else, I have to look within. Isn't that amazing? You know, it's like just a beautiful mirror. And Alokda in one of his uh, talks also shares that parallelly, another possibility is true since world is a mirror. If I discover kindness in myself, I see kindness all around. If I discover a psychic being in myself, I see people's soul you know, brimming out from their personalities. And if I discover love in me, I see that everywhere I am able to see love encased in different personalities. So that is the power of using world as a mirror. That obstacles are in me and if I make progress, I see progress in the world and I can make it happen in the world also. So it is in one's own self that all the obstacle lie. It is in one's own self that all the difficulties are found. Now, as Taru was sharing that now I have no excuse after reading this and if I truly understand what it is implying, then I have no excuse. I can't gossip about anyone. I can't uh, say that this person is difficult. It's just actually uh, just ignorance, avidya. So can I just make this my mantra and we need from time to time different mantras since we forget. You know, we may read this prayer now and we may forget and we may still crib about a person later on. That why did that person have to, you know, whatever, you know, say this or do that so that I suffered or you know, my family suffered or whatever. So it's very easy. It's very easy for us to blame others. Why? Because we are just habituated to run on that groove. It's like a tape recorder. You know, it has been playing for centuries, no, you know, maybe lifetimes. And now for it to com come to a complete halt, it needs some time. 
but the, we cannot say that only it needs some time we will have to put effort we'll have to reduce the force and grip of these movements so knowing that it is a habituated track just like when we go out for adventure you know we take one trail and then we again take that trail again take that trail you know we become habituated so it's very difficult then to put ourselves on a different trail because we become familiarized with that trail you know now all the things that come on the way they appear so one with us you know? so i'm not ready to venture out why would i go out you know, when i'm so comfortable and that's again brings me back again to suffering because if i suffer being on the habituated track then i would be compelled to take a different path and that's why suffering is a blessing because if i'm not suffering then i'm not convinced to leave the habituated path if the oily food is not spoiling my health why would i leave the oily food it's so tasty so i would not and if i suffer then i'm compelled you know slowly i get used to the boiled food or you know, what whatever maybe fruits or good kind of stuff not saying that that only matters but just using it as an example so it is in one's own self that there is all the darkness and ignorance and if i accept this life can turn really beautiful not beautiful in the sense that there is no effort and difficulty but beautiful in the sense that the onus comes to me that i reclaim my power back from the people and situations to whom i keep giving away my power you know this person did that that place did that that house was not maybe good enough for us you know so when we do this cribbing we lose our power feel how weak we feel when we are uh, in our selves you know complaining about people we feel weak it may give us excitement egoistic excitement definitely sharing the gossip with someone but uh, we feel uh, less responsible because we have given away the responsibility to something else but when i reclaim the responsibility then i also have the power to transform i am also a magician then so if i accept that in me is the darkness that i see in the other person then i also make the necessary steps to transform that darkness or find light in that darkness and hence i also become capable that if i see darkness in someone else i would be able to empathize you know i would not neglect that person or reject that no you are an evil person and you know too selfish too arrogant why because i have seen the arrogance and selfishness in myself and i have seen that it is able to i can transmute it i can transform it i can be better so the same thing in the other person so no matter how evil the other person may appear how depressed the other person may appear if i can come out of my depression the other person also can because the enlightened nature the divine presence is there with each one of us untarnished kept safe as shri aurobindo says in savitri so this is how we reclaim power to work with ourselves and others and this uh, paragraph the second you know this uh, starting from here this really relates with kabir's couplet and also a song where he says तेरी काया नगर का कौन धनी मारग में लूटे पांच जनी सो ही सेज दैट हु इज द मास्टर ऑफ योर बॉडी द मास्टर इज नॉट होम एंड द डियर्स ऑफ द सेंसेस दे आर लूटिंग अवे ऑल द इंटरप्रिटेश ऑफ द माइंड ऑल द मटीरियल इनपुट दैट कम्स टू द सेंसेस दे आर लूटिंग अवे योर सेंचुरी हु वेयर इज द मास्टर ऑफ योर बॉडी रेफरिंग टू द माइंड अलर्टनेस एंड देन लेटर ऑन ही सेज बन में लुट गया मुनिजन नंगा डस गई ममता उल्टा टंगा सो ही सेज इवन वेन आई गो इन टू फॉरेस्ट अ मुनि और अ योगी और अ साधु एसिटिक यू नो ही मे थिंक दैट वो वॉट अ परफेक्ट प्लेस टू प्रैक्टिस यू नो फॉरेस्ट एंड इन द मिडल ऑफ नेचर नो बडी अराउंड नो ह्यूमन बींग्स नो इविल अग्लीनेस अराउंड बट हिज ओन माइंड इज अराउंड एंड इफ ही इज अटैच टू ऑल दीज इमेज अबाउट हिम सेल्फ एंड अदर्स he is as mother says uh, you know if some egoistic attachment cuts us off from the integral communion with thy divine love we would be no nearer thee despite all outer circumstances so i may be sitting in the best place possible in this world you know perfect solitude perfect greenery and you know all the people are nice and in their own areas but if my mind is crowded with attachments then there is no communion with the divine love 
एंड विद दिस कबीर जी ऑल्सो सेज दैट यू नो तूने कितना पढ़ लिया टू थ्री कपलेट्स यू नो आई एम गेटिंग रिमाइंडेड ऑफ वेर ही सेज दैट लिख लिख के पत्थर भयो पढ़ी पढ़ी भयो है ईट कहे कबीर तो है प्रेम की लागी ना एक ही चीट he says that reading and writing and reflecting you have become like a stone you know like a rigid stone and uh, i don't consider you a scholar because uh, you don't even have one speck or one drop of love in you and this we see with uh, you know many of us who become scholars in their own right we, i may be a beautiful researcher but when i interact with people when i interact with my own self there is no love there is such a coldness indifference and i just want my place you know i should be comfortable i should be my, with my books but rest of the world may go to hell it doesn't matter so he says that the true mark of a pandit is that his heart is open and his heart is full of love where he says pothi pad pad jag mo aaya pandit vaya na koi dhai akhar prem ke pade so pandit hoye so and we have, we may have seen our, our relatives you know many many relatives especially in old times where you know they are full of love they have not read any scriptures but when it comes to interaction with people they are always full of love you know, selfless altruistic love so that's what uh, i think we have to open either through the scriptures without the scriptures that doesn't matter is my heart open or is it opening am i ready to open my heart do i see the locks on the doors of my heart because if i don't see the locks and if it, if i only complain about other people's locks you know the, the how unloving and how unfriendly others are there is no hope for me so this has to come back to myself as they say you know be the change you want to see in the world so it's the same in this also that i have to become love if i want to see love around me so being conscious of these bonds of illusions which when we practice mindfulness when we become mindful of our thoughts what we are doing our postures you know our habits uh, we see the ripples arising we see the illusions arising and we can step back in mindfulness we can step back so it's not that the illusion has completely uh, loosened the grip over me it is still there i can see it but now i have had it enough and i don't want to follow the dictates so in that mindfulness i can step back and create a new path can any circumstances be considered more or less favorable you know so biggest example we have shorobindo in alipur j i don't think there is any good example than that and in the beginning he did suffer he said you know that why am i here why did you bring me here but then he also heard that uh, you are here because Uh, you have to do some work which you were not able to do there where you were engaged so now do that work and he says also that the mind was so violent and uh, untamed in the beginning when he started all the meditations in the jail but that's how all of us start and but with persistence things happen if i am convinced that this is the path for for me to go things happen things change so can any circumstances be considered more or less favorable now there is no excuse i can have that my kids don't allow it you know i don't get the time my relatives are around you know these are all excuses that we have in the middle of everything i can be mindful i can be love and that's the path that's the path that's the greatest discovery in the middle of battlefield i doubt it it is the idea that we have about them which enables us to profit much or little by the lessons they give us so idea for example i may have an idea that that you know if i go to taru was using the word himalayas you know for example if i go to himalayas then my concentration will be amazing is that true is that truly true all the people living on himalayas have a absolute concentration we'll see logis- logically speaking it's not true if i have a house of my own then i will have absolute concentration is that true all the people who have uh, solitude in their houses are they able to tame their mind and we will see again that we fail here so 
this is the idea that I have that if I am in the cave, then it's going to be delightful. And no wonder that if I go to a place like a, you know, Himalayas or a place which is suitable to me next to a river, it's the idea in my mind that is giving me the relief. If the same idea I can have for any place, doesn't matter what, then I will have the same relief anywhere. So I may have that idea with this person, I feel very restless. And no wonder that I continue to feel restless with that person. You know? Why? Because it's that's idea. And if I just let go of that idea, again, a shift is in the consciousness happens. And with that person, I can have a different kind of an interaction now this time. So it is the idea that we have. So we have to be very conscious of what ideas am I sticking to right now? What is making me miserable? We have to check in from time to time, like just like, you know, checking within and see that if there is a drop of misery, okay, what am I sticking to? And we, we, we do stick from time to time because stickiness has been a habit for us for a long time. So to become non-sticky would take some time. But in that time, I have to keep putting effort with a lot of honesty. So it is the idea we have about them which enables us to profit much or little by the lessons they give us. O oh Lord, I implore thee, grant that I may be perfectly conscious and master of all that constitutes this personality. So each ripple arising in my being doesn't go unnoticed. This is what Kabir says when he says, guard your farm, guard your farm. See all the animals from outside, he uses the word deer from deer of senses, you know, the inputs that we get from the material world and the interpretations we have about it. He says, all these deers of senses are looting your inner sanctuary. So be on guard, be on guard. So that mother saying the same thing, you know, that be conscious of all the ripples arising and try not to act through a ripple, which is an unconscious ripple. You don't know, but you act. Try not to do that now that you know. So grant that I may be perfectly conscious and master of all that constitutes this personality. Each ripple, each thought, each feeling, each sense perception, each interpretation of the mind. Being conscious of that, being mindful of that. So that I may be delivered from myself. Now this is what we talk in the Bodhisattva path, you know, that may I be delivered from the ego consciousness because it has done havoc to me in the lifetimes before. And in this life, I'm not going to allow the misery created by the ego consciousness. So if I don't become conscious of the ripples, I'm not able to step back from the ripple also. So that I may be delivered from myself, you know, my, which we call ourselves. We call our ego personality our own self. As Karu was sharing that I am the ball. And Sri Aurobindo in Savitri says that man is his own biggest enemy. He doesn't know that there is no other enemy out there. I am my own biggest enemy because I stick to thoughts and opinions, not only about myself, but also about world and people. Just to be aware of that stickiness. So that I may be delivered from myself and as soon as the shell breaks, the ego shell breaks, you know, in consciousness, when I become conscious of it, the shell breaks, then thou alone may live because what else is there but the divine. So when we become conscious of the shells that we create, it doesn't have the power, it loses grip over us and all that is there is the highest manifestation of the divine, which is pure love, which is love mingled with kindness, compassion, wanting benefit for everyone, rejoicing in the happiness of others, no matter how hard it may appear at times, you know, noticing that it's hard for me at times to rejoice and letting go of that stickiness and rejoicing in happiness of others. In Isha Upanishad, uh, Sri Aurobindo says that why should I rejoice in the happiness of others? Because when I rejoice in the happiness of others, maybe a person has got more wealth and more health than me and he's very happy, he looks very content. When I'm rejoicing in his happiness, I am not actually rejoicing in his happiness. You know? Actually, what I'm doing is I'm putting my true self in front rather than my ego consciousness. So I'm doing a favor to my own self. 
because when there is divine in everyone in me in other beings who is rejoicing in the other body the divine so then i identify with the divine in me when i am able to rejoice and be happy for someone that i am glad it is happening for someone because it's happening for the one divine in me or in others so that's how shurabindu puts it i feel it's a beautiful way to put it to live in love by love for love indissolubly united to the highest many and what is the highest manifestation of the divine it is the power of love not uh, the concepts and images of love that we have in our mind because they are attachments but pure altruistic love which uh, is also liberating not engaging and also wanting benefit of all the beings that are there a heart full of love we have all touched uh, this space within us with others around you know we have all touched this space so to live as that love is our highest highest possibility mother says why because love only has the power to transform if i see ugliness in others if i see a criminal in others it's only my love for that criminal that will be able to transform because otherwise i'll be full of you know oh i don't want to approach you know i don't know how dangerous that man is but if i have love in my heart i would not be afraid to approach any worst possible you know faces in this planet that's the power of love and transmute it transform it always more light more beauty more truth and as you were sharing that there is no end to this perfection so no matter how far we may have traveled there is still far 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 as mother says that there is much more to be attained to be achieved to be realized and whatever we have realized is nothing in front of what is to come so that can keep me grounded that i don't get up high in the air from time to time we have this habit and good that some kind of delusion is broken through some or the other source so yeah i know i speak a lot <laughs> so sorry for this yeah. what about when you see uh, only the darkness within you um i think this is not a possibility so somewhere i feel you know again just sharing personally check it out within also i feel that this is not a possibility it's not a possibility that i am feeling love and light and beauty and harmony everywhere but darkness in me only i feel that that's not a possibility but uh, one has to go by your own experience so i'm say yeah monica so just now you said <laughs> we we are able to see the darkness in others first then afterwards uh, you know after some time after some uh, stages of suffering you know mm. uh, we are able to see that you know we also i also have the same uh, weakness in me yeah mm-hmm. okay today so with this um, prayers is very very apt see mother gives answers to everyone in in their own way mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so today i was you know going through some uh, tension so this is the best answer for that you know mm-hmm. when something bad happens then only we we check ourselves mm-hmm. how far we have progressed and what is the steps to take in future Yeah. to you know attain to this perfection as you said there is no end for this perfection mm. very true but you mm. know we have to take little baby steps as you said yeah yeah i am able to see you know some darkness in others very very easily mm. but you know after speaking about them to someone so we realize who oh, what is this that mm. same ego which is attracting my ego is only attracting their ego then mm. why do you why do you talk bad about others i was questioning myself in the evening mm. so this is a beautiful answer for that mm. you know time to time 
all this uh, drama happens yeah. to check ourselves yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> and, yes. yeah beautiful yeah thank you for see uh, our ego is only attracting the, their you know somebody else's ego or mm. how is that mm. you're asking or you're sharing yeah i'm asking i'm asking you say it again yeah see i have ego mm. i am able to see somebody else is not talking to me properly mm. they are very rude mm. okay so after some time i feel very bad why this person is behaving this way mm. Mm. so uh, after coming home we'll be thinking about that thinking of what is wrong what is wrong what what is bothering me mm. and what is bothering them Mm. why why there is no harmony in this relationship mm. so uh, after so many you know dwelling i find out i found out today afternoon that you know i have ego mm. see if they are not talking to me properly that means i also have the same egoistic something something is triggering them to not to talk to me properly so is it so is it true i'm just asking you you know uh, there is a story which i may be with alokda i heard the story where there is a sadhu uh, who is going along with his disciple to various villages and uh, he asked they ask you know that how are the people in this village and everybody had a different answer so one would say beautiful people lovely you know uh, surroundings <laughs> and the other one would say that you know very bad people very <laughs> so uh, that's i would say that it also kind of uh, hints me towards an answer to what you were sharing because as alokda also shares that if i'm if i have found a bit of kindness in me a bit of love in me i see that coming from other places also and if i am too much about myself that i am the fixed one and others have to fixed fix themselves then all that i see is uh, darkness and you know arrogance and selfishness which i have to work with my own self you know so i, I think that uh, it really these kind of situations are good that they happen because they ground us they tell us that my work is far from complete <laughs> and if i am able to see darkness out there to judith tyberg you know who had psychic been in front jyoti priya to mm-hmm. her mother said that for you of course the mission is divine work whatever you are doing spreading words of mother shurubindo but even for you she said that whatever difficulties you face in the outer world they are the absolute relation to what you have to face in the inner world isn't that amazing you know to her uh, she she is saying to, to one who has found the psychic being and living from the psychic being even there the journey is not ending so for us mortal beings you know the journey is really a long one so i think it really helps to just come back to my own self and also to realize that if an outer situation happens how easily i get swayed and how i how the mind just scatters itself in thoughts and stories that i have in the head and how i lose the touch with the home of the mind which is the body i lose touch with breath you know you would see when you are either when we are gossiping or when we are in our stories we have no idea about where breath is very true very true here yeah. and he, uh, people have said that masters have said the home for the mind is the body and when a mind is lost in the forest of thought it's not home that's why we feel so restless and our stories are not true because you may have a story in the head about a particular situation i would say i have my own story so who is right and that that is the clash that's what we call ego clash so neither you are right neither i am right when we bring mind to the breath in the simplicity of the present moment then we are all right <laughs> all right <laughs> music ban gaya <laughs> yeah beautiful the other day you showed or shared on video hmm. one person the buddhist monk i i am not able to pronounce his name mhm this opera when free was you know tignathan uh, Ah, uh-huh. ah, ah. Uh huh. Yeah, he was, you know, sharing, you know, how you you are always, you know, calm. So I am, I am trained like that. Yeah, I think Taru must have shared that. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> the other class, it was beautiful, and he didn't show any expression. You know? Yeah. He was very calm. Absolutely. Yes. 
yes so it shows that we have to put effort you know it doesn't come without training yeah beautiful see once something happens after you know telling everything to somebody then we realize <laughs> why should i talk like that yeah <laughs> if a scorpion stings it is the nature of scorpion why do you want to go and put your mm. hand in that and say that you know it is stinging me mm. it's not necessary but you know at, at, after you know each circumstance have comes like this then only we are you know feeling oh it's not right <laughs> you know one thing which comes to me is that we are not yet disenchanted from the world we have a lot of glitter and attraction towards the world in the sense that something in the world of the material world is going me going to give me happiness we are very sure about that we don't yes. lose hope <laughs> <laughs> and this uh, buddhism starts with disenchantment that once you have lost hope that uh, there is nothing that you are going to get from the world outside disenchantment yes there the journey starts that now you can offer yourself to the world because you know that nothing lasting is going to come from the world so i think from time to time we have hopes uh, which we have to realize that uh, they spring up again you know ummeed ummeed kehte hai na ummeed pe duniya kaayam hai so <laughs> this duniya in my head samsara in buddhist terms uh, this only entangles me when i have hopes from people and situations if i lose up all hopes become hopeless which appears like a sad term but it's a very happy term i feel because when i become hopeless then i don't expect much from others i'm so ready to basically offer basically expectation right? expectations yes yes yeah, yeah. beautiful yeah. and as mother says that never uh, lean on anyone for support and kindness always lean on the divine but we forget So, so we think you know the other person is going to give us very yeah. beautiful yeah. support it happens yeah yeah everything. and then we get disappointed when the other says something which is very insulting soon. yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah we are just as habituated it's also very good sorry as you say always you know if the other person cheats us or tells us something back then that is also good mm -hmm. so we know that we should not <laughs> Mm. behave in that way yeah and it's a good thing so it it is not to be taken in uh, in a sad way that you know people cheated me now i am i am on my own no not at all oh wow people cheated me <laughs> what else can i expect from this world and yeah. good because it brings us back to ourselves you know betrayals and people cheating and insulting and rejecting it brings us back to ourselves and i feel that that is all that matters if i come back to ourselves no matter how hard the journey may be beautiful yeah uh, thank you thank, thank you thank you thank you taru you had unmuted you wanted to share i think uh, yeah there was something i don't remember i think it was about the darkness i think you know how like somebody had said that what if you only see darkness no but i think for me i have realized that to see darkness also you need light right so you the fact that i can see darkness in me shows that the grace has started right the light has started pouring in that i can see okay these are my darkness this is where i am and to know that sticking to it now will also be a ego game so but now that i see it i can move towards pure and more light Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Anything from you, Shweta? Listening. Okay. So, uh, what about the timings? Uh, we have the prayer. Second one, we can take it up, or we can not take it up today. We can take it up in the next one. Whatever the majority says. शारदा जी 
because you know the tidbits you know it gives lot of inputs yeah it, it does it, it's yeah <laughs> it does uh, but i somehow uh, i didn't prepare or plan for it so okay <laughs> but you can you know feel free to watch oh, so many things available uh, if you randomly hit anything by tigna thaan or uh, jatsun matins in palmo you know all of them are full of treasure so yeah just hit any video and you will have something good yeah thank yeah. you okay thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you monica thank you taru yeah see you bye you everyone thank you so much